What's up guys, today we are assembling the block of the FRS motor. We need to take this off the stand and put the other half on the stand. Then we already have the main bearings in. We're going to go ahead and lube those up, place the crank in, put on the RTV, and slap the two halves of the engine together. From that point, first we need to gap the piston rings. Then we will install the piston rings on the pistons. We will install the pistons and rods onto the crank. And that is how far I'm hoping to get today. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is switch which halves of the motor are on the stand. Okay, so now that we have the correct bottom on the stand, we're gonna go ahead and lube up those bearings and place a crank in. So that was not as flawless as I wanted. I forgot to lube up the sides of the thrust washers. So I had to pull this out and half the bearings came out with it. And then I had to re-clean everything and reinstall the bearings and re-lube it and put this in. So we are good now. We're gonna go ahead and work on the other half of the engine and then made it up to this half. Almost forgot about this new O-ring, which goes right here. All right, let's go ahead and get the that side RTV. Honestly, guys, don't waste your time on this. It's expensive. This was completely sealed, never opened, and it's hardened. And I got this from a dealership. So don't worry about using this stuff. I'm just going to use some Honda Bond. You can always trust Honda Bond. Or use some Permatex Ultra Gray. Do not waste your money on this. Yeah, I just cut a hole. I just cut a hole in the side here and it's completely solid on the inside. Here we go, now we got the good stuff. Okay, so I did this super close to the specs of what's in the service manual. I tried to get it as best as I can. Around these bolt holes was a little hard. It had to be like less than one and a half millimeter diameter. So I think that's the right amount. It's, it's, it's a little difficult, but over here is pretty accurate. Right there, and then it's thicker right there, thicker right there, and then thicker down here, and it goes off the ridge a little bit, just like it says in the manual. Essentially, I did exactly what they did in the manual, a little bit more specific than I would do on any other engine build, but you know how prone these are to spinning bearings or getting RTV in the pickup tube, so I just wanna make sure that I do everything right. So we're gonna go ahead and place this half on that half and uh, bolt everything together. First, I'm gonna put some assembly lube in those bearings and assembly lube on the crank right here. Okay, so now this is completely together. I have it bolted together in here and those bolts up there. Everything's torqued properly. Next, uh, I think I'm bending these arms a little bit because you can see there's a gap right here. I need to get this stand bolted up to both halves now that this isn't gonna be separated again. 
and so I'm going to pull the engine off the stand and set it down there and I'm going to install I'm going to install the rear main seal while I have it out and then I'm going to bolt this piece back on and then put it back on the engine stand and that's where I'm going to call it for today. Okay, so that was a whole lot. I accidentally slow motion dropped the engine on this head side on the cardboard, but I was so worried that I bent one of these dowels because if you bend one of those, it's so hard to get everything back together, but it looks like it's still good. I got the rear main seal in now. It looks pretty even. It has to be uh, within zero to one millimeter sticking out from here. And I don't have the correct tool for installing it, but it feels super even all the way around. I think it's sticking out a little bit far right here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and press that in a little bit. But other than that, I think we're all good. We're going to go ahead and continue on with the pistons and rods whenever I get to this next. All right, guys, today we are gapping the piston rings and installing the pistons and rods. So, so far, all I've got done is the first piston ring I have uh, gapped or the first cylinder I have both piston rings gapped. I also checked the gap on one of the oil rings just to make sure those are good because that one is good. I'm assuming the rest of them are. You don't need to gap your oil rings. And I am using the service manual here and it says to gap the first ring between 0.2 and 0.25 millimeters, which I think is really, really tight, but I'm following it anyway. I'm actually doing a uh, closer to the 0.25. I'm using this 0 0.009 or 0.229 millimeter feeler gauge for that top ring. And then for the second ring, it says to do between 0.6 and 0.7 millimeters um, or between 24 and 28 thousandths ish. I also think that that's really loose. So the, the top gap is tight and the second is loose. Usually they're close together in an engine build. So it's a little weird to me, but I am still following this guide. I tried doing some research online and people say all different sorts of things, so I feel like the guide is the best to go off of. Um, so for that second ring, I'm doing 0.61 millimeters or point or uh, 24 thousandths. So these are what I'm doing, gapping one and two, two. And like I said, I got the first one done. I'm moving on to the third because that's the next cylinder on this side of the engine. You got one and then three. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the first ring in here. I've removed all of the rings from this piston and I'm using this piston upside down to press these rings in evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on now and put this camera on the tripod. So here we have our new rod in the second cylinder. Um, here's the old one where the bearing was spun. So I need to switch this out. I've already removed the rings from this piston. Um, there are two snap rings, one on each side. And uh, I really only need to remove one snap ring and then take something and push this wrist pin through. And that should allow us to separate the piston from this rod. And then we need to put this rod on, push um, the wrist pin back through, and then put the snap ring back on. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay. Now this is installed. The way that I knew to install it was to have this big open spot. I'm not really sure which side of the piston this is because I haven't really looked at it yet. But the big open spot goes on the end that's angled right here. So this rod leans forward and the big open spot goes to the left side of where the rod leans forward. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out how to install the rings on here now. 
Okay, so looking at the service manual here, the lower oil ring side rail needs to be pointed to the bottom of the piston here in this lower right dip right there. And then the oil expander needs to be at 12 o'clock. And then the other oil ring needs to be on the left side. It can be in that range, C right there, which is zero to 20 degrees. I don't really want it at zero because that's where one of the compression rings are gonna be. So I'm gonna put it closer to 20 degrees. And then on the next page here, you got one piston ring is uh, gapped on the left side and one piston ring is gapped 180 degrees onto the right side. It doesn't matter which one is pointed at which way as long as they are 180 degrees apart. So I've already done the first piston. That one's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the other three. After almost an hour of messing with it, I can't get this piston in. I've taken off the rings and tried, I thought maybe to the oil, I thought the oil expander was a little bit too big. So I put only that on and I was able to get the piston in. It was still difficult, didn't want to go in, but it did fit. So maybe it's the oil rings. I think something is too big for the cylinder. I'm not entirely sure. Also. This is a really bad spring compressor, so I'm gonna try to buy a better spring compressor and then I guess try again. What's going on guys? I did confirm that the DNJ parts that I ordered did not fit those piston rings. I bought them off Amazon through a company called Partsology. They have a website where they have engine parts and things like that. Partsology has been super awesome throughout this whole thing. I sent them pictures comparing the DNJ rings to the OEM ones that came out. Um, and they have agreed to allow me to return them even though it has been 72 days since they were delivered and I am outside of their 60 day policy. So thank you for that Partsology. I would recommend buying from them uh, any, if anybody else is interested. The DNJ rings did seem to be pretty good quality but they obviously didn't fit and they, I did confirm that I bought the right ones, I was sent the right ones, and they still didn't fit my piston. So it could be an issue for any of you guys, just be wary about that if you buy from DNJ. Really quick, just so you guys can see the differences between the DNJ rings and the OEM, here are the pictures that I sent Partsology. So there you go, clearly very different. Let's get back to the video. That being said, I now have Chewy, look at this dog. I now have piston rings straight from Toyota. Um, these are OEM rings. I bought them from Toyota of Colorado Springs. I will put their website in the description. That's where I bought the crank from. And that is where I bought the rod from as well. Their prices were the best for the crank and rod combo. But if you shop around, you can find the best deals for the best parts. I just bought my piston rings from them because I knew they were good. Something I think is kind of cool is they put my name on the package. I don't really know why I think that's cool, but it's got my name on there. And hopefully no other important information. But anyway, so here they are. They are packaged very much like the DNJ rings and they are about four times the cost. So if the DNJ rings would have worked that would have been awesome. The DNJ rings I think were 50 bucks. These are 160 shipped, I believe. Anyway, I'm going to I am going to gap one set of these. So I'm gonna put the oil rings on. I'm gonna assume the oil rings are good because they're OEM. I'm going to gap the top and second ring to their proper spec, put it on the piston, and see if I can install a piston. If all goes well, 
then I will do the rest of the pistons. I should have showed you this before I put it away, but this rod is in, that piston is in right there. So obviously the new rings fit. When I went to put it in the first time, the rod kind of rotated and got a little stuck in there, so I had to pop it out and redo the process, but obviously they do fit now. So that means the problem was indeed with the DNJ piston rings. So I'm gonna reach out to Partsology and let them know that those rings do not fit this car. I saw somebody else commented on Amazon saying they didn't fit their car either. Um, they had the turbo FA20. I'm not sure what that comes in, like an Outback or something. So clearly these probably don't fit any Subaru motor unless maybe you have that aftermarket DNJ pistons. I'm not entirely sure on that. Don't take my word for that. But anyway, I got to put the rest of those pistons in. It's late now though, so I'm going to do it maybe tomorrow. What's up guys? It is the next night. And I have to wake up in four hours to go to the airport. But I really just want to get this short block done. So I am going to start working on it. I'm going to gap the rest of the piston rings and install the last three pistons. Um, hopefully it doesn't take me more than like an hour or so. And then I can get to bed. Here we go. All right guys, that's the end of this video. I just want to point out that I did not have to gap the OEM piston rings. As you see, I checked the last few. They didn't need any adjustments. Actually, the first one was in spec two. I made a slight adjustment to it because I didn't anticipate all of the rings being in spec. But yeah, I guess if you buy OEM rings, you don't have to gap them. I would still double check them though. Anyway, in the next video, we get the rest of the engine assembled completely. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. All right, thank you guys so much. Peace out.